Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer, and with me today is actually not Steve Martin. Surprise, surprise, but uh, very special guest we have today, somebody who's been with us on several of our virtual user groups, if you've seen any of those that we've had over the past several months. Uh, Mike Matzdorf. Mike, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Mark. So Mike is a producer, editor, writer, composer, director, many hats, and uh, has recently been edited with, uh, been editing a feature film with Final Cut Pro 10. First assistant editor, actually. First assistant editor, but using Final Cut Pro 10 on a feature. Very, yes. very cool thing. So what Mike's going to talk to us today about is basically using Final Cut and some companion applications to handle visual effects workflow. Yes. Great. So why don't we dive in and see what you got? Great. Well, uh, what I want to talk about, uh, Mark, is that on any movie, even if there's no visual effects slated, that there's going to be visual effects. Because something always comes up. You've got to replace a sky. You've got to fix somebody's skin. Uh, something happens in the background, any number of things can happen, and there's always effects, and they need to be organized in a way that uh, you can pass on, understand, you need to share with other departments. So and even the most straightforward documentary, yes. Verite, is going to have some special effects in there some way. Something's going to happen. You need to happen. communicate with the people who are doing that work. Right, right. Okay. And, you know, there's going to be a cameraman reflecting in the window yes. somewhere yep. that has to be removed. Yep. And, and can't do uh, all that inside Final Cut necessarily. Right, yeah. right. So some of it is going to need to go out to, say, After Effects or Nuke or uh, any number of applications. Yes. And um, <clears throat> what ends up happening is you have to deliver from editorial what you want. You'll rough it out in editorial, and then you'll pass it forward, and they'll make it nice. Right. That's their, that's their job. And so what I've set up here is a, as simple a library as can be. OK. And um, Single library, a, single event? Correct. It's mm -hmm. a single library uh, called Visual VFX. And, uh, a single uh, event which I only have all of the components and elements for one effect in. And if I had 100 effects, I would have 100 events. So a separate event for each single effect. Correct. OK. Yeah. I think it's a, <clears throat> it's a good thing to do for a few reasons. One is you can have a bunch of elements that make up an effect. Say you have cars driving by in a background that is a green screen to start with, and you have six cars going by. You're going to have six layers of cars. You're going to have a foreground plate, you're going to have actors, you're going to have background plate, there's all sorts of things. And so if you can just isolate it in one event, that's a good idea. And I have comped a really rough comp uh, based uh, from a couple of stills. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to play that for you now. And uh, should I go full screen on that? No, no, you're good. Job okay, great. Yeah. Um, and what I did here was to put a couple of monkeys in this plane mm -hmm. and then force them towards the screen as if they were about to crash into uh, something. Can you just park the plate over it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So Great. So it's got a couple of elements. And this is a, a comp. So you're basically mocking up the final special effect that you want somebody else to do the beautiful work. Of. Correct. OK. Correct. Not that this isn't beautiful. But um, <laughs> what we have here is we have the, uh, the airplane. I'll just go back to the beginning here. We have the airplane itself. Whoops. Um, the airplane itself and one graphic uh, of a monkey, which we've put in both windows okay. of the airplane. And then we have uh, started to twist this and push in and added a little Some bit shake of, of handheld float. Uh -huh. And this is a representation of what we want to see in the movie. Okay. Um, and when we hand this off to another department, we'll give them a reference movie. So I'll mm -hmm. put a quick time from here. And uh, on this reference movie, they need information about where they are in the sequence. Uh, the number on the lower left is uh, foot and frames. In visual effects, you would typically have a frame counter. Okay. I don't have mine installed right now, so it's foot and frame. And then uh, running time code on the right, as well as information about what the shot is. And any any film, any uh, production is going to put some sort of protection on the on their stuff okay. that goes who, out of who, house. Who owns it, and then a name, and a date, and, and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Basically, what it is and where okay. it came from. So, how did you add all that additional? Data on top of the uh, clip well, there. We there's one plugin which uh, I worked with uh, Alex Golner on, uh, who's better known as Alex 4D out there. Alex4D.com, I think. Is yes. Tight. Okay. Yeah, and he built uh, this very cool, uh, very cool foot and frame counter. It's called. Uh, uh, it's on his website. It's a feature. Uh, it's a feature f uh, foot and frame counter, and it controls all sorts of things like uh, start footage, start frames. You can put the sub uh, the titles on screen, and you can also have a time code window, control the colors and the positions and the sizes of everything. But it's very handy to have all that in one 
uh, because on any film, whatever you turn over to visual effects or sound um, or uh, for a stage is going to have this information on it. It's great to have it in one place instead of having to stack up three different generators. Right. So you have one title effect here. Is this a free plugin? It's a free plugin okay. on Alex's site, yeah. Okay. And it's a title effect, so it shows up in the titles browser and you just drop it on top of your clip and you can enter all of that information on one single uh, Correct. Title. Well, what we do is, uh, the smart thing to do is drop it onto an adjustment layer. Um, because the, in this effect in particular, this is a compound clip, okay. and the, the layers for this compound clip are just laying there. Nothing's happening with them. Yeah, so you've got the two stills of the monkey and the still of Cor Correct. Mm -hmm. And the compound itself has been animated. So if you put this uh, spoiler and footage and time code, it would also animate with the yes, effect. Yes, and you don't want so, that shaking all around right, and, and exactly. growing. Right, exactly. So we went right. ahead and put that on a Got it. on an adjustment layer up on top and added added a slate to to the shot. Now, what the process for the shot, the path that it's going to take, is it's going to be exported as, as a reference movie. That reference movie is going to be sent out to a vendor to mm -hmm. execute the effect. Please build my special effect based on this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I like to bring that reference movie back in. So I actually have a copy. Uh, a copy of it here. This is a QuickTime, the QuickTime which I would send out. You export it out, imported it back in. Correct. To this light, to this Just event. to keep a reference and then the elements from it. You know, here's, here's the airplane, here's the monkeys, and here's the sequence for it. And I think that what I would do, because there may be multiple versions of this, is to go ahead and keyword this with uh, what, what it is, and we'll just call this version one. And so if I had a version two, I would keyword uh, the things for version for version two okay. as they came back in three because there may be changes that may right. get extended or so you just shorter. selected them all command K V one and now they're all tagged that way so you've got a basically versioning history and can tell what happened because these visual effect shots might be done over and over again to get them right yeah and when I get something back from a vendor I'm going to go ahead and tag it with that same version same number way. so it, it's going to it will all travel together um, also when we export the elements for this, or notify someone of what the elements are, we can make an EDL, which mm -hmm. is handy. But something that's also handy is a count sheet, uh, sort of indicating what happened and what all the elements are. And this is a bit of a rough one uh, that I put out of a beta version of Producer's Best Friend, which comes from uh, Intelligent Assistance. Okay, and Producer's Best Friend is what? So it's a separate application? Pro yeah, it's a separate application, and what it does is takes Final Cut Pro XML mm -hmm. and turns it into a spreadsheet. Okay. And one of the new features in Producer's Best Friend, which will be coming out, is the ability to make layouts. So I've created a VFX layout, which contains only some of the information that's available. So it's a subset of basically all the metadata associated with, with what's exported in the XML. So you can exactly. just choose what data that you want to communicate to the particular person or department you're sending it to. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so when we output that, we have our information about what the clips are called. Uh, these are named this way. This, I just pulled these stills off the internet. Uh, where they are in the timeline, uh, how long they are, and uh, the source information on them, as well as notes and effects and other stuff that uh, came along with them. And I think you were saying earlier, we were talking in the, ver uh, the user group meeting, that a lot of this process normally is manual, like you're just writing stuff down yeah, and this really automates a lot of that manual process. It, it does. It, it automates it, and also, uh, this is giving you information on the timeline ins and out. Now, this particular effect happens. Everything starts at the beginning and ends at the end, but that's not always the case. Yes. Something may be starting later, ending earlier, and these numbers will reflect that. And so, these it's generating a visual effects count sheet, um, and with a little bit of user added information, this can be a very complete thing that you can ship off to your visual effects house and it'll make them very happy. Fantastic. And not take up a lot of time in editorial. Fantastic. Cool. It's beautiful. Is that it? That's it. All right. Excellent. Well, that was very helpful and you know, while you might not be involved in very big visual effects processing, but any film that you do, as Mike's pointing out, is probably going to have some kind of visual effects in this Producer's Best Friend app in combination with Final Cut allows you to communicate with people in a very simple, contained way that you can track, which is key when you've got a lot of these things being revised over and over again. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, this, along with uh, the plugin from Alex4D, it makes people's lives a lot yes. easier in the visual effects department. And also with, with the producer's best friend, you can also 
export all of your dailies information. You can keep okay. a code book because uh, all that stuff always needs to be passed on to people. People who are awesome. cutting trailers or doing TV versions or doing sound or visual okay. effects. So. And, and the name of the plugin for, from Alex4D is called Feature Feature something? It is on his website, and it is, it's called the, the Feature Plugin, I believe. Okay. I you want to so check it? That's okay. Check it out, alex4d.com. So look for that. Check out uh, Producer's Best Friend. Uh, great, thank you. Where can people find out more about you and track what you're up to? Uh, I am tweeting at uh, FCPX Features. Okay, um, at FCPX Features. At FCPX Features at Twitter, and uh, there's some Final Cut Pro tips coming out there. I'm working on a book, uh, Feature Workflow, which uh, was sort of battle-tested stuff that we learned uh, on the ground, uh, muddling through a few versions of Final Cut Fabulous. and delivering to sound and picture and uh, changing versions and. It, there's a lot of great information that's going to be excellent. In it. So if you're if you're looking at doing feature length kind of work, this book uh, you gave me a little peek of is is fabulous. You're going to want to check that out. So Mike, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.